someone that is like the absolute perfect human being, right? It's like, oh my god. Welcome back to the best leadership podcast ever, where every week we rethink your daily habits to catapult your career. My name is Jeff Matlow. I'm a leadership coach. I help executives and entrepreneurs overcome self-doubt to become the types of leaders that lots of people want to follow. But this isn't about me. It's about you. And I'm really excited today to have Jordan Cutler with us. Now, Jordan, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much. So Jordan and I didn't know each other as of about seven or 10 days ago. But thanks to the beauty of the Substack Network, I stumbled across one of his posts in his newsletter, and it blew my mind. And just to give a kind of preview of what we're going to talk about, uh, and then I want to get some of your background, Jordan, but Jordan's got this uh, uh, newsletter called High Growth Engineer. And there's a article called Managing Up, Three Things I Wish I Realized Sooner. It is one of the best leadership lessons I've ever read, period. So stay tuned for that. But before we get there, Jordan, uh, great to have you here. Can you just let everybody know a little bit about your background and the cool companies you've worked for and why yeah. you're Yeah, for sure. So I write the High Growth Engineer newsletter. We uh, essentially, it's a soft skill newsletter for software engineers. There's practically no code in it. It's actually read by a lot of people outside of software engineers as well, like product managers, designers, people in CX or just leaders in general. And I talk about topics like managing up is one of the big ones. Influence is another one. And my background, I'm a senior software engineer at Pinterest. I have worked at Gusto and Qualified recently as a Series C startup. I also worked at a crypto startup <laughs> and uh, a while back was at Twitter before uh, all the Elon crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my background and uh, excited to chat about this. I hope it's not hyped up way too much, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I will do my best to uh, to deliver some crazy insights. You know, I, I was actually thinking about this, this article here and um and about who you're catering to. So I know it's engineers and soft skills for engineers, as you just said, but what level people, so my newsletter, the best leadership newsletter ever, is focused on managers and above. Who are you focused on in this? For, for me, I try to focus on the people that are one to three years behind me. So maybe a couple of years into their software engineering career. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of things, people outside of that can get value from it. I mean, I get uh, comments from people that have been in the industry for 10 to 20 years and they read some of my stuff and they'll say, wow, like I've been in the industry for 15 years and I can't believe that I didn't think about this or didn't know this to this point. If I knew this 15 years ago, this would have right. just cha it totally changed the trajectory of my career and put me on a huge growth path. So. Yeah. Um, I try not to, you know, necessarily target people that are above me because uh, I like to, you know, try to get the people that are a couple years behind me to my level. Uh, yeah. But I'm sure plenty of people outside of that will get value. Well, listen, I, I often get contacted by uh, people just graduating college or new entrepreneurs or something like that. And, and they ask, you know, for advice. And Sometimes it's tough for me to give the good, you know, advice because of who I'm used to talking to, which are a little bit more experienced, you know. And what I realized is your managing up uh, issue of your newsletter is the advice that everybody starting their jobs needs to know. I talk with so many people who have been in the roles for 5, 10, 15 years, and they still don't do it. I'm, I'm going to overhype it again. Uh, when you start your job, here, read this, read this issue. Yeah, and these are the yeah. three things you need to know. So I want to jump in on these three and and yeah. let's talk one by one and everybody get your notepad out and start <laughs> taking notes. Give us the brief background. Why'd you write this article? And let's talk about the first one. Lead us into the first, the first thing everybody needs to know. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote this article partially because I have started to take on more leadership roles myself. And it's actually something I want to do. You know, right now I'm a software engineer, so I 
primarily write code and do tasks that are handed to me from a manager or I would work with them, you know, on to do. But eventually I, I always had wanted to get into management so that I could see things from their perspective. And I figured worst case scenario, if I ended up going back, you know, to software engineer, well, now I would know what it looks like from their perspective and how to be an even better software engineer on my side. I've already started to get a little bit of a foray into that recently through a couple of things. I mean, I've organized like an internal conference at our company where I'm working with like 10 other people to, to coordinate things. I'm working on uh, leading an internal hackathon where there's like, you know, 15 plus people on it, uh, working on blog posts together with other people. And so I started to notice some things from the leader perspective that put a lot of the lessons that I taught a while ago and uh, giving me the background why, like why should you be doing these things? Like, for example, why should I say what I'm going to do, do it, give updates, and then say that I did it? I know that that's good advice, but now I am actually experiencing how that would be so nice if the people that I'm delegating to did that for me. And so that's sort of some of the inspiration behind the article and the first point as well around removing uncertainty, which I, I can get into. In yeah, let, yeah, let's talk about it. So uh, the one thing that everybody needs to do in their job in managing up is remove uncertainty. Yeah, so the, the first point that I talk about is uh, if you imagine that, I mean, I'm sure many leaders listening probably have the same experience where you'll talk with one of your reports, mm -hmm. you'll say, hey, we should do this thing. They agree that they're going to do it. And then what happens like right after that, that conversation, your brain probably starts to go into question mode. Are they going to get this done? When are they actually, are they going to get it done by the time that we agreed on? Are they going to meet the quality bar that I'm expecting? Can I trust them to deliver on these sort of things? Or uh, do I just, you know, not have that built up yet? And so that sort of realization came to me when I started doing this delegation and some of the leadership uh, tasks that I'm doing right now with, you know, organizing a conference and things like that. And I realized that it's, it's kind of weird because it's like from their perspective, uh, the, the, you know, IC that's being delegated to, they're thinking, oh yeah, of course they should trust me. Like <laughs> we just agreed on this. Right. But yeah. from the manager side, it just naturally, you just wonder about this stuff. And I, I made the, the example of how it even goes back to, you know, when you worked on like group projects back at, you know, uh, university or something like that. And you chat with someone and they say they're going to do something. And how many times did you get to that date and it just wasn't done or it was, you know, totally uh, shod work or anything like that. And so those experiences, I think they probably manifest into uh, just a lot of wondering about what's the status on things. Is this actually going to get done? And if you're on the you know, sort of receiving end, the, the direct report end, and you want to manage up effectively, then you should be thinking about what are these questions that your manager has in their head and how can you pr proactively address those? So for me, what I do is I, every week I'll, at the start of the week, I'll tell my manager what my plan is, how I'm basically going to impact the things that are their goals. And it's going to, you know, we'll bleed into the next, this, this next point as well. Yep. Uh, and then at the end, I tell them, hey, I did this thing. I did exactly what we agreed on. And if you do that enough times on a frequent enough basis, right? Because you can't do that, like, let's say at the start of the quarter and then at the very end of the quarter and that like, there's no updates in between. So I update them, you know, every week. So doing that, it, uh, it uh, you know, builds up that trust where they can just say to themselves, okay, this is just a standard week, like any other week. Jordan's going to give me his update at the beginning of the week. He's going to do everything that he said he's going to do. And then he's going to tell me that he did. <laughs> and there's no reason to doubt him. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me talk a little bit about the incredible importance of this and why it's a big problem in 
corporate America, I was going to say, but really in just every business out there. So I remember my first job it, in the first like month, the, the managers were saying how great of an employee I was. And I was confused by it, right? Because I did naturally the three things you're telling people to do here, which is say what you'll do, update them regularly and let them know when it's done which seems for some of us intuitive, for many people, it's not, right? It's, mm -hmm. It is the feeling of, you know what, just trust me, I'll get it done, but they don't always do that, right? And so just by doing those three things, you elevate your career, right? Like I rose up pretty quickly because I got things done and I communicated about it. Now, what this leads to is accountability. That's what this is. And accountability is one of the biggest problems in uh, in companies is how to keep people accountable. Because as one of my buddies, he has um, three letters in his office, DYS, which is do your shit, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea is just get it done, right? Like, I don't want to have to harp on you. I have a course that I run, which is uh, how to 10X your team's productivity with accountability. And what I teach people are these three things, right? And empowering people to say what they'll do, update you regularly, and tell you when it's done. Yeah. And so for any manager out there, like you better be writing these things, put it on a post-it note, because it's the difference in your career. Yeah. Which leads us to number two, because the important thing, are you doing the right thing? And let me give you a stat mm -hmm. before we go to number two. So yeah. this uh, workplace guru, Ann Lore, did a study and found out that 85% of leaders don't tell their employees the pri what the priorities are. And 85% of employees want to know what the priorities are, right? Yeah. So number two is their priorities are your priorities. Yeah. So talk about this one a little bit. Exactly. I mean, a lot of people, I think they they do what they're told, but they don't think one step higher level than that. Take a step back and think, why are you being told to do this? What ultimately is your manager's goals? What are your team's goals? And how can you align what you do on a weekly basis and what you plan to do toward those things? And if you're constantly, you know, going back to point one, if you're constantly doing what you're supposed to do, you're saying what you're going to do and updating and all of those things are aligned toward your manager's priorities. Your manager just views you as someone that is like the absolute perfect human being, right? It's like, oh my gosh, this person is just doing everything that I need them to do that helps me out. And uh, they're updating me as they, as they do it. So if I get any questions by, let's say my boss, then I'm able to say, hey, yeah, I know exactly where Jordan is at with this. I know uh, when it's going to get done. And he's he's updating me, uh, you know, probably tomorrow during his Friday update, right? His, his end of the week update. So I can, I can even update you. I already know when things are going to happen. So um, it even bleeds into to that remove uncertainty as well. But um, what I do actually to, to try and, you know, uh, accomplish this is... I, one, listen to company all hands closely, and I try to hear out what it is that the execs are talking about the most. And then I'll, in my weekly planner, I have sections for what are the priorities. And then those all determine what are my priorities for the week. Mm -hmm. So it starts with the company priorities, and then it goes, what are the team's priorities? And then I, in one-on-ones, I'll ask my manager, uh, what, what's top of mind for you? What are, you know, the three things that you really care about getting done in the next month and the next quarter, things like that. And then I try to figure out, okay, how does my work tie in to those? And it also helps you make decisions in the same way as when you're, uh, there's the advice, right? When, if you're asked to solve some sort of problem, maybe you get handed something by a product manager or something like that. It's always the, the question, what's the why behind it, right? Because that's going to help you make better decisions. Same thing with your priorities matching your manager's priorities. If you know your, your manager's priorities, 
with for the project, let's say it's to improve developer experience. As a software engineer, I know then that I'm going to be making decisions that focus on the quality aspect for developers rather than just rushing to get it done. Maybe his priority is to just, you know, really rush this thing done so that he can get to the next thing, right? And then in that case, now I know, okay, all right, I need to skip a couple steps here. And I, uh, throughout the decisions of the project, I'm going to use that same language and even talk to him in that same way, right? Because it allows me to speak to his same language. And I'll just say things like, oh yeah, I, I know you, what's top of mind for you is to get to this next thing. So I'm going to rush past this step and that's going to help us get to the thing that, you know, you really care about over here. So it just, it feeds into all the conversations and all those things that your manager loves uh, that, or they will love about you if you do this. <laughs> right. Yeah. And let me, let me bring this back to like everyday life too. You know, the people you hang out with, your friends, the ones you like the most are the ones that make you feel good about yourself. Right. And the ones that uh, will help elevate you emotionally or whatever it is. You know, when what you're saying here, number two, is the same thing. Like your job is to help make your boss look good, right? Mm -hmm. And so in order to make your boss look good, you need to know what's going to make them look good. And I often tell people the most important question you can ask in a one-on-one -on -one to your manager is what are the three things that are keeping you up at night? They may not have told you before, and they may not even think you can help them. But if mm -hmm. those things are on your mind and you continually bring them up, even if you're not involved in them, like you said, like going to the one-on-one -on -one next week and saying, hey, I know this was a big issue for you last week. What's, you know, how's it going? Mm -hmm. It shows that you care about their priorities and it shows that you're your dedication and commitment to achieving the goals of the organization. You know, this is just not about managers. So are the salespeople listening to this? Like these things all work for sales, right? You want, if you're in the middle of trying to sell a prospect, going back to number one, you want to tell them what you're going to do. You want to update them while you're going to do it. And you want to tell them when you're done. And you want to know you're not selling your product, you're solving their problems, right? So you want to know what their problems are and yeah. how to solve those problems, right? And that's your goal. And so this one, uh, the way you think about it, the way you do it, Jordan, is just brilliant. And uh, I don't know anybody else who is who I've heard who's listening to all hands meetings and taking notes about what they're saying, but everybody should do that right regardless of your level because that's yeah. how you're going to move up and that's how you're going to move up quickly absolutely yeah um, that's all great calls yeah i would say it also moves you to like rather than someone that is just a report receiving tasks it moves you up into a collaborator position where your manager views you as someone that is actively what you know you're working with them not just for them too because if your manager is able to have those vulnerable conversations with you about what's keeping them up at night and you're able to help them either just through talking it through or actively working on doing those things, then they're going to come to you for other things too, like the next big opportunity. Hey, I got this uh, the thing coming through the pipeline. Are you interested in it? And you're going to be the first one that they, they come to as well. So uh, it all just adds up into this uh, bundle of, um, you know, uh, your manager trusting you and, and giving you uh, some of the best opportunities and and uh, being willing to be vulnerable with you. Right, right. And so we've got removing uncertainty and removing the worry for the leader and then ensuring that you understand their priorities and, and then understand that your priorities are their priorities. Mm -hmm. And that leads us to the growth mindset, which is number three, because... Once you know their priorities and you start thinking about them, if you go the next level, the next step, and do things that you're not even asked to do, it changes the game, right? So yeah. talk about this one. Talk about this one a little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, the way that I think about this one tying into the others is that things aren't always going to be perfect. You're, it, we, we definitely paint, paint the sunshine and rainbows pretty well with the first two points. If you do these, you're going to, 
uh, get all these benefits from your manager, but you will mess up sometimes too. And I mean, first off, if you do the first two things and you mess up, your manager is going to be a lot more flexible with you than if you didn't do those things and you mess up. But the next piece is, is that, I mean, I've made mistakes where, um, you know, I've asked for feedback from my manager and they've given me feedback. One example was they told me that I was moving slowly, like too slowly. And I thought to myself, how, how could this be right? Like I'm shipping so much code. If I look at, you know, if I compare myself to others on the team, then I can see that I'm doing a lot more, but it's not like you need to really think carefully about how you respond to that feedback because I mean, there's, it could go very wrong if you respond the wrong way, right? If you respond the wrong way, one, they're not going to trust you to, to give for them to give feedback to you again. Mm -hmm. And two, they're going to view you differently as someone that is unwilling to grow as well. Mm -hmm. And um, both those things can really break apart your relationship with your manager because if they're now unwilling to give you feedback because they're scared, well, then now if you actually do need to improve and they're too scared to give you the feedback, <laughs> well, right. you're definitely not going to improve then. And so um, uh, if you do the opposite, right, which is like understand their perception behind the situation and not all feedback, there's like a difference between the reality versus perception as well. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. in my case, maybe I wasn't actually working slowly, but my manager believes that to be the case. Right. So I need to fix that perception problem somehow. And it might be things like um, being a little bit more visible, giving more updates about things that I'm working on. He might view me as working slowly because there's this other person that is giving him a ton of updates who is actually working sl more slower than me, but he's giving a lot more updates. So it just appears like he's working faster. Point. So, yeah. so like there's, there's, you know, I ask myself that, that question when I, when I do get feedback, but overall, if you respond the right way, which is to understand their concern a little bit more, ask for some examples and ask how you can work to address it. And you show that you're constantly willing to grow and be better, then they're going to constantly be more willing, you know, they're going to be more open to giving you feedback which gives you more opportunities to grow. And they also have their mindset shifted from you being someone who's going to get defensive to someone who, no matter what, if Jordan is messing up here, I know that he can get better and improve and work toward where I need him to be. So that's what the growth mindset piece is all about. Yeah. And again, on the, the article, you've got a couple of charts about mistakes and how to up your game with uh, by learning from mistakes. And what I always mm -hmm. uh, teach leaders to say and, and to do, and in fact, it goes back to my how to 10X your team's productivity, is making mistakes is fine. Like, great, make mistakes, learn from it, right? So if you make a mistake once, awesome. You make it twice, why'd that happen? You make it th three times, we got a problem now. Uh, everybody should be able to adhere to that. And I always tell my employees that in advance, like, here's what it is. Like I embrace mistakes because that's the way we learn, but mm -hmm. you got to be able to learn <laughs> and exactly. you got to have that personal growth mindset as well. I think most experienced managers have probably gotten to the point of realizing that they're never going to get a perfect employee, right. but they also need to see from your side that without that perfectness that you're willing to just at least work toward improving when you do mess up. So right. uh, you just got to constantly show that. This is awesome stuff. I, uh, I really thank you for, first of all, writing it. Um, I am sending it out to a lot of people and uh, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> and um, yeah. And, and it's great. You have a new big fan in me now <laughs> and hopefully in others who are listening to this, where can people find you? Yeah, on LinkedIn, search for Jordan Cutler or just Google high growth engineer and my sub stack should show up. I write every week there. Concise article should be readable within five minutes, usually has some visuals and diagrams to to show the concepts and it's perfect to share with friends like uh, like you're doing. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. Yeah, and I'll put, I'll put all your information will be down below in the, in the comments. And what I love about 
finding writers like like you, Jordan, is listen, I'm not an engineer. I know enough about leading engineers to have them really be angry at me. But <laughs> uh, it's the same leadership concepts with just a different perspective, right? And so you don't have to be an engineer to be reading a uh, high growth engineer and you've got 40,000, you got a lot of followers. So um, everybody go in, be one of them. Also, if you like this stuff, go to buytitleonly.com and I've got my course on how to 10X your team's productivity in less than an hour. And uh, there's some more information there. I'm not gonna go into it now. Thank you. I hope thank everybody- Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. And uh, everybody have a great day. Talk to you next time.